guys. Hi, welcome everyone. I'll give all of you a couple minutes to join and then we'll start. We're painting this beautiful fireflies today, guys. I'm going to put it here for a second and I'm going to have a tiny sip of water. Okay, I will wait for all of us to join before we start. So I'll give you all a couple minutes. And for those who are wondering, this is what we're painting today. And you guys are free to adjust colors however you want. You can do anything you want with this painting. Hi. Oh, yes. Why? And once you guys are here, feel free to just say hi and write where you're from. In chat, that way we will see who we have here, how many people, where from. Yes, from Barry. Awesome. I'm going to. Ottawa, amazing. I am from Oshawa. Amazing. So glad to see so many familiar faces here and not familiar faces as well. Yes, wonderful. I hope you guys all prepared with canvases and paint and brushes. Awesome. Awesome, so we have a lot of us here, so I think we can start. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Vera. I will be your instructor for today, and I will show you how to paint this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful painting that was actually created by another artist who teaches here. Her name is Liesl. She created that beautiful painting, but today I will be showing you how to paint it. So let's go through our supplies. First things first, guys, you are going to need a canvas. So I have my nice 16 by 20 large canvas. You guys can use the same size or you can use any different size. Totally up to you. Doesn't have to be this particular size. What else? Yes, and if you're using smaller size, make sure you adjust the brushes as well. So smaller size canvas means smaller size brushes. So I'm going to put my canvas here. You could totally paint on anything else as well. If you would like to paint on wood or on a piece of paper, go for it. You don't have to paint on the canvas if you don't want to. Now, what else do we need to know? Oh, guys, before we get to painting part, um, this video is rewindable, so you can rewind it. If you feel like you would like to have a bit more time, you're a perfectionist, or you just know yourself and using a large canvas and you're taking you a bit longer than the rest of us, Feel free to rewind it. And if you would like to see certain step again, absolutely go for it. Uh, and guys, you probably noticed there's chat option here and I see a lot of you writing things in chat. I will be checking comments as often as I can, as often as I get a chance. But if it gets crazy out there and your comments get lost, please don't get upset. Just write it again and I will try my best to see all of them and respond to all of them. Now this video, video, uh, will be recorded so it's going to stay on our page for a certain amount of time i would say minimum a week we try to keep them a bit longer nowadays because um you guys ask for our older videos quite often so we try to keep them for a couple weeks but i can promise you that it will stay on our page for at least one week so if you can do it today but you would really like to paint it no problem you can do it tomorrow or you have a week or maybe even more to do this now wonderful Okay, so we have our canvas. Yes, perfect. Um, next thing we're gonna need is some sort of palette. I actually have three different palettes going on here. I have this one that I used when I was painting that sample for you guys. And I have a Tupperware lid, <laughs> which I find them super, super useful. And I would definitely recommend any Tupperware lid because they're reusable and they're washable and they're plastic and they're perfect. 
And I have a piece of cardboard. So you guys are free to grab as many palettes as you want and you can use pretty much anything as your palette. Now, what else are we gonna need? We are going to need our brushes. Very important. It's very hard to paint without a brush. So I will be using three different sizes today. I'm gonna be using a large brush. In my case, this is a large square brush. You can grab any other size. It doesn't have to be square. All sizes work, uh, sorry, any other shape. It doesn't have to be square. Uh, my second brush is a medium square as well. But again, you could use medium pointy, medium rounded edges brush, whichever you would like. And a small pointy brush for details that we're mostly gonna use for our branches actually. So guys, grab a couple sizes. If you have a nice large set with let's say 20 different brushes, good for you, use all of them. Just see which one will work best for every step. If you only have one brush, that's okay too. That's not a problem at all. Just you, just you just might need to adjust the way you hold it to get the most out of your brush. Now, next thing we're gonna need is either a cloth or a paper towel. In my case, I have both today. So I have my reusable fabric cloth and I have a couple napkins. So grab a few of those. And water, very important, painting water. You guys gonna need it right here. And of course, most important thing we're going to need today is paint. I am going to be using primary color. So I have this acrylic start brand. We get it at Curry's and it's a really good mixing paint. So I'm going to be using this and I'll be mixing it into all shades of this. If you guys have pre-mixed paints, even better. It's much easier using pre-mixed paints. Feel free to use teals. You should uh, probably have a couple shades of that, black, purple, yellow, white. If you have a couple shades of that, perfect. If not, that's okay. As long as you have primary colors, which is blue, yellow, red, white, and black, we will be fine. I will be mixing them along with you and I will show you how to mix them into all this. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's all we're gonna need for today nothing else oh hi everyone i see more hi messages from chat amazing guys so happy to see all of you close and far neighbors awesome so let's start what do you guys think we're gonna start with let's go through the breakdown here just look at it and give me your best guess and write it in chat what do you think is a first step here what color do you think we're gonna start with and i'll give everyone just one second because I know um, it takes a minute for your messages to show up on my feed, so I'll give everyone a second. And just type it in the chat, because that's the only way you can communicate with me right now. Sky, yes, that's right. That is a correct guess. We're gonna start with our sky. And we will start with teal. For those of you who are just joining us, absolutely, the video will be up for a couple um, days for sure, for about a week. Yeah, I can guarantee you, might be longer. Background, background, that's right. You guys are all absolutely correct. So what are we gonna start with? We're gonna start with a light teal right in the middle. We're gonna start here, and then we're gonna spread it into darker teals on the sides. So that will be our backdrop for this painting. Once we have that, we're going to move on to our tree trunks, and we have a tree trunks of a couple different colors. So the first ones are going to be in blue or purple. You can choose whichever you want, blue or purple. So we will add a few um, tree trunks right in the middle here, and we will add a couple of branches coming out of them as well. And we will add some grass. Now, once we have that, we're going to move on to our darker trees, and then we're going to make our darker color and we'll add a couple of the darker trees, but on the same level as well. Now, once we have those, we will finish up our grass with black. And uh, while that is drying, we're gonna go on the top and we will add some leaves right here in darker teals and medium teals. After that, we're gonna move on to this, the main focal point, this beautiful purple, um, Tree top. Now, 
as I noticed, this video for some reason doesn't reflect the actual color here. It's actually way more purple than what you guys see. It's more like pinker. I don't know why it doesn't show on camera. But either way, we'll get there. You can always change any color here that you want. And you can have a bit more contrast, a bit less contrast, totally up to you guys. So we will do that. We will position it here and we will do it in a couple different shades. We will do darker shade, medium shade, light shade. We'll do some white. After that, we're going to move on to our tree trunk right here. And we'll add a little bit of purple on the side to our grass. And then we will finish up with the highlights on our tree trunk and fireflies all over the place. Sounds not too crazy, right? Sounds manageable. Yeah, you guys can totally change colors. If you want to do cool ocean breeze color for the sky, absolutely. It doesn't have to be teal. It can be any color you want it to be, guys. So now we're going to start. Now that we have our breakdown, we know what to expect. We know what's ahead of us. We're going to start. First things first, for starters, I need you all to grab the biggest brush that you have or a cloth if you have a nice clean fabric cloth, dip it in the water and wet the whole canvas. So I'm gonna grab my brush today. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and clean and I will wet the whole canvas. And you can do it horizontal versus strokes vertical, it doesn't matter at all in this case. However you do this, it's all good. For those of you who are using different uh, mediums such as wood or paper, you guys don't have to do this. Only for people who are using canvas. And if you're using very small canvas, you don't have to do this either because there is no need for you to do this. If you do it, it wouldn't be a mistake. You didn't mess it up. That's okay. It doesn't make it worse. It's just the reason why we're wetting our canvas is because we're going to be covering this large, large area right away with um, and with our color, with our teals, and we want it pretty solid coverage. And canvases sometimes can be quite spongy. So there would be times when you would start painting on a canvas and try to cover a large area. And you will see your canvas sucking in all the moisture from your paint and not letting you spread your paint properly. That can happen. So that's why we're wetting our canvas first. So it doesn't take the moisture from our paint and lets us spread the paint properly. Now, if you overwatered your canvas, what do you do if you did too much water? Nothing, just give it two seconds, it will dry, especially if it's a hot in your house or if you're outside, it's gonna dry really fast. We are in that season right now that everything dries crazy fast. So don't be afraid um, to have a little bit too much water. You can always give it a second to dry. Okay, while you guys are doing this, I'm quickly going to check the chat and see if, there, if anyone has any questions that need to be answered ASAP. Yes, light pink background will look awesome. Absolutely. How do you mix colors to make brown? You don't have, you, you don't have brown paint. That's okay. You don't need brown paint for this. We are not using brown paint. If you would like to use brown paint, that's no problem. Let me know. I'll tell you how to use it. Uh, sorry, I'll tell you how to mix it. However, I am not going to be using any brown paint here, so don't worry about it. Okay, guys, I'll give all of you a second to do this. And whenever you have it, give me thumbs up. That way I would know that you are ready and you have your camera sweat and we can move.
black canvas. You could use black canvas if you wanted to, no problem. For this particular painting, it doesn't matter what canvas you use. Uh, black canvas, white canvas, whichever. If you have any other color canvas, that will also work. Okay, guys, I'm going to quickly copy the link to this video and I'll post it in um, event group for people to, e to be able to find us a bit easier. So just give me one second. Okay, guys, awesome. So let's get to painting. Now we're going to start with our first color, which is teal. So you're going to mix light teal. If you have pre-mixed light teal, good. You can definitely use pre-mixed light teal. Um, if you don't have pre-mixed light teal, mix with me. I'll show you how. So you're going to need to put three colors on your plate or your palette. You're going to need to put white, blue, and yellow. That's uh, what are we going to make our teal out of? To answer your questions, I am using portrait. You could use landscape if you want. Is it doable without black? Hard. It's going to be hard without black. You're going to need to replace black with some other dark color. So if you have dark purple, dark, dark blue, or dark, dark green, you could replace it. You could replace black with that. Uh, okay, guys. So grab blue, yellow, and white. And how are we gonna mix our light teal? You're gonna start with a base of white. So you're gonna scoop some white on a side. I'm gonna mix all my white actually because I'm gonna need quite a bit of this paint. So I have my white right here. Now I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and I'm gonna scoop a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna grab some blue and I'm gonna mix it in and you will see it will turn into light blue. And you can decide how light you want it to be. It could be very light or it could be more like a medium light. And once you have light blue, then you're going to take a tiny, tiny smidge of yellow and you will add it to the same paint you just mixed. Now, don't overdo it with yellow. If you add too much yellow, it's going to turn green. And unless you want it green, don't do that. Because we want teal. The way to make teal is just a tiny, tiny little dot of yellow. Too much yellow and it's ruined. It wouldn't be a problem if it's green closer to the sides, but for the middle, we still want to stick with fairly teal color. So, and if you feel like it's too light, you can continue adding touch by touch blue and yellow until you get to the right color. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I have my teal. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try just a little touch. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Okay, so I tried a tiny touch and I like this color, so I'm going to continue with it. Let me show you guys closer the color that I will be using. You can always go lighter or darker. It's up to you. doesn't have to be exactly this shade because remember, this is your painting. It's um, your masterpiece, so make it unique to you. It doesn't have to be exactly the way I'm teaching it. If you put your twist on it, that's a good thing. So feel free to experiment with color as well. Now, once we have our teal, we're gonna start coloring the middle part. So with the vertical brush strokes, we'll start coloring the middle. And remember to dip your brush in the water every now and then. What I usually do is whenever I run out of paint, before I refill my brush with paint, I would dip it in the water. And only after I dip it in the water, I will dip it in paint, get some paint on it, and then I will go on a canvas. And we're going to color, I would say, about um, two-fourths in the middle. And you're going to go all the way up and all the way down.
maybe even more than two four but definitely not less than that because the other colors that go on the sides we're gonna overlap them what brush are we using big brush the biggest brush that you have this is the biggest brush that i have so i am using this one if you have any other brush that you think will do the job go for it Hey guys, I'm gonna add a bit more. I'm gonna go a bit further to the sides. Now, if it's a little brush strokey and it's not as smooth, that's totally fine. It's not a problem for this particular background and for this particular painting. As long as your brush strokes are vertical, you're all good. So I have mine now. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes to do this, no rush. And if you wanna do your sides, it's much easier to do them as you go. So it's much easier for you to just add the sides right away. And once you have it, put your brush in a water or wash it off and let it stay for a little bit clean and dry. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to do this. Whenever you have it, give me thumbs up. That way I know that you're ready and we'll move to next step. In the meantime, I'm just gonna check all the messages and see if anyone has questions that need to be answered. Guys, remember, you can rewind this video. You could totally rewind it. Yes, awesome. I see some thumbs up. That's amazing. Yes, if you did the whole canvas, that's not a problem at all. Not a mistake. The other colors we can totally lay over our teal, so don't worry about it. Now, if you're wondering how to make teal, it's blue, white, and a tiny touch of yellow. Now, if you guys are far behind, just um, rewind this video. You could definitely do that, and you can start from the beginning. Need some tunes. I agree with you. We should have some music, but I don't think Facebook allows that. I think they frown upon that because they count they count if we play music at Facebook Live events, they count as at stealing music. So no tunes unfortunately. I know. Does the teal have to be completely dry? Not at all. I'm just making sure all of you guys get a chance to do your teal. I know teal is a tricky color. It takes some time. It can take a bit of a bit longer than any other color because you have to get it right. So I'm giving you a little bit of time. But once I see enough thumbs up and I know that majority of you are good to go, I will show you next step.
Okay, guys. Yeah, do we have it? Do we have it? I see more thumbs ups. That's awesome. So now we're going to go to um, our sides. Very similar color. Not the same, but very similar. Does the shade of blue affect color? Yes, your shade of blue does affect color. If your blue is ultramarine blue, you're going to have a hard time making teal. It does happen sometimes with most blues like primary blue or phthalo blue. You're going to have no problem with teal. But there are certain teals that, uh, certain blues that are not going to give you good teal color. If you're using one of those, you could just use straight blue, no problem. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, guys, if you want to adjust your colors, go for it. You don't have to do exactly the same I'm doing it. If you, one of the colors is not working for you, replace it. Replace it with any color you think is going to look great. For this painting, any fuchsia color for the background will look incredible. Or blue, whatever you want to do with it. Now, for the sides, what are we going to do? We're going to make teal color again, but we're going to make it darker, and we're going to make it a little bit greener this time. So we're going to make it the same way we did make this color, but we're going to wait, use way less um, white. So this time, we're not going to start with a white base. For our middle color, we started with a white base. But for the side color, we're actually going to start with a blue base. So you're still going to need the same colors, white, yellow, and blue. But this time, we're going to start with blue. So scoop some blue on the side. Then add a little bit of white to it, mix it in, make sure it uh, turns into about a medium blue. And then little by little start adding yellow until you get it to the right shape. Uh, and you could go teal, like a dark teal, or you could go a bit greener. Both will look good in this case. Now something to avoid, do not use black under no circumstance just don't use black and the reason is once you start adding black it's going to dim your color you're not going to get bright greeny teal or emerald color you're going to get a muddy grayish color so black is great for contrast areas and we will add it in certain spots but not here not here so again guys how are we mixing our dark teal is start with blue, scoop some blue on the side, then add a little bit of white, mix it in, make sure it um, turns into medium blue, and then little by little, smidge by smidge, start adding your yellow until you get it to the right shade. I need more blue, actually. Okay, so I'm going to take some of my blue on the side. And guys, I usually water down my paint just a little bit. I find that it's much easier to work with when your paint is a bit liquid. I find that straight from the tube, it could be a bit too thick for the large areas and perfect for the small areas. So I mix my primary blue this is my primary blue because it's super dark with some white and this color happened this one now i'm going to start adding yellow touch by touch and it didn't take long until it turned into exactly the color that i want it to be now i'm going to quickly try a little oh yes this is good i always try a little spot as you noticed because I want to make sure this is the right color. I don't want to commit to it until I know if that's the right color or not. So I'm going to give you guys a second to do this. Do you see? That's the color. It looks actually darker than what it is. It's not as dark as it looks. It looks almost black, but it's not. Yes, I can show you reference painting, no problem. So remember that our light area in the middle and then sides are going to be a bit darker. They should be about two, three shades darker. Nothing crazy dark. You don't want them to be very, very dark. You definitely do want them to be darker though.
yeah if you need to add a little bit of green that works too all the colors that we're using is basically components for green it's just depending on how much of each color you add that's going to determine the end result so if you add equal amounts of yellow and uh, blue for example you're going to get green right away if you add a lot of blue and just a touch of yellow you're going to get teal if you add some white to it you're going to get light teal if you don't add white you're going to get super dark teal if you add just a touch of white you're going to get medium teal so it's just a combo of these three colors if you don't have darker blue that's okay my it's the same blue i use the same blue for this that i'm using for this it's just for this color i added more white for this color i am adding less white so it's the same as long as your color on the sides is darker than what your middle is you are good so even um like if you feel like this is as dark as you can go and still too close that's okay just make your middle lighter so you have a bit of contrast between middle and the sides I will show you guys what to do, no worries. I'm just making sure you mix the color first. So I'm waiting for everyone to mix the color and then I will show you what to do with it. Awesome, yes, you guys can do this later, no problem. Okay, so once you mix your color that you think is gonna work, try first a little smidge of it and see if it's a good color for you if not um yeah adjust it before you commit to it adjust it now once you do have the color that you want you're going to start adding brush strokes so you're going to color this side with um this color but you're not going to overlap it yet so you're going to go right to it first Color it and go right to your teal. And if you're doing your sides, don't forget to do your side right away as well. And only once you have this canvas covered, what I'm gonna do after this, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water so it's nice and wet. Then I'm gonna take this color again, but I wanna make sure my brush is wet first. And now I'm gonna start going back and forth on my teal first, and then I'm gonna start moving towards the right. And with whatever little bit of paint that I have left on my brush, I'm gonna start adding brush strokes the same way towards the right until I run out of paint. Sometimes you will get it right from the first try, sometimes you will not. So do you see this is not bad, but it needs more blending. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. So I'm going to dip my brush in the water. Then I'll take some of this paint and then I will go on my teal. So not on the line, not where they connect, not on teal, not on light teal. I'm going to go on my dark teal. I'm going to start doing back and forth, up and down. And then as I go, I'm going to start continue moving towards the right. That way, I don't go while I still have lots of paint on my brush. I start going once my brush starts getting emptier and emptier. And I will just go until I run out of paint again. And then you can go towards the left if you want. So basically, just doing those brush strokes. Up and down, left, right, up and down, left, right. You will see it's going to start blending and create a smoother transition. For this particular painting, it doesn't have to be a smoothest transition you've ever seen because we're gonna lay so many things over it that you're never gonna see a full background like this. So it doesn't matter if it's super smooth blending or not. But of course, just do what you can, do the best that you can here. And once we have one side, you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So if you still have some of this paint, good, just do the exact same thing on the other side. If you don't, mix more paint, Try to match it to the best of your ability. If your color doesn't match exactly on left and right, that's okay. It's not a problem on this painting. But if they do, even better.
Stephanie, we can't post the link until the event is started because uh, link is automatically generated once the event goes live. So I posted the link as soon as I got a minute to give you guys a break and post it. But usually if you go to our Facebook page that we list absolutely everywhere, you should see the video right away. If not, just refresh the page a couple times. And yes, this video is rewindable. You can totally rewind and start from the beginning. And it's also going to be up for a few days. So you guys have lots and lots of time to do this painting. Now I'm going to move on to my second side here. And I will make a little bit more paint because I am almost out of paint at this point. Okay, I made more paint. Let's see if it's the right color. Nope, not the right color. Let's adjust it. Okay, let's see now. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I am going to another side. And again, if you're working with large canvas, what I find helpful is I find very helpful dipping my brush in the water quite often because I find that if I use dry brush to cover large areas, it's pretty hard. So either watering down my paint a little bit or uh, wetting my brush quite often, I find that it really helps me personally. Okay, so again, you remember how I told you, you color in the side first, all the empty canvas first, and only then, once you cover the empty canvas, then you start spreading it towards the middle. And you see, it turned out pretty good on the bottom, not on the top, so I'm going to do it again. You do it as many times as you need to do it. You don't have to try to get it right from the first try. Okay, guys, I have both of my sides. I'm quite happy with them, so I will wash off my brush. And we'll give you guys a couple minutes to do this. Whenever you have it, give me thumbs up. Let me know in chat. Say I'm good to go or thumbs up or ready. That way I would know that you all are ready and then I will show you our next steps. If your dark teal looks gray, I would assume the problem is your blue, but I would say add more blue. More blue, less yellow if it looks gray. Or switch it to a completely different color. But definitely don't add black. Black is going to make it worse. As long as you don't have black mixed into the edges, you're good. Any darker color will do, especially. You could technically even do teal needle and like a fuchsia sides. That will look really good as well. Do you see? I have a purple-ish painting right here on the background. And in a contrast with our teal painting, it looks really good. So if you wanted to go that way and if you want to go crazy with color, you could do that as well. Just don't add black to the side because it's going to make it grayer. Here 
you're welcome, Jennifer. Awesome, I see a lot of people, um, many people are good to go. Yes, yeah, some people are uh, finished sites even before me. Good for you guys, good for you. Um, if you want center a bit lighter, can you drop two, three drips of white and blend it with water? You could. It depends on your brand of paint. I probably wouldn't do this with my paint because I know it's going to leave streaks and I don't want them. But if your paint um, is a bit more solid than mine, you could. I would recommend actually making the lighter color and adding lighter color versus just blending white. Up to you. Awesome, so I see a lot of people ready. If you guys are not there yet, let me know. I'm gonna start showing you next step, but again, if you feel like uh, I'm way too behind, you can either scroll back or just let me know and I'll give you a couple minutes, I don't mind at all. Yay, Molly, that's awesome. So now we're going to move on to our trees, and those are gorge. So we're going to start with those. We're going to put these three tree trunks right in the middle, but we're going to do one at a time. And you guys are going to do two. You're going to use two brushes at the same time. You're going to use your medium brush and your small brush. So for medium brush, depending on what kind of brush you have, you're going to use it a different way. I have this brush. That's the brush I'm going to be using. Oh, it wasn't black. That's okay. I'll wash my hand. So this is the brush I'm going to be using. And I will be using the top edge. You see, it's a flat brush. So if your brush is flat, you're going to use the top edge of your brush because you want to have finer lines. And the top edge will give you finer lines. If, AS, if it is not um, flat but pointy, what you could do, you could use just the tip of your brush because you want to have finer lines. Small brush would be a little bit too small for this step. Big brush is going to be a bit too big, so medium is your best choice. And it really depends on uh, how big you want your tree trunks to be. If you want your tree trunks a bit wider, make them a bit wider. If you want them a bit smaller, make them a bit smaller. Again, this is your painting, so don't be afraid to go a little bit your way. And the color that we are going to make is going to be, you could use either blue. Sorry, guys, I just wanted to wash my hand before I touch my canvas with a hand covered in black paint. Because that would be a big oopsie. So the color that we're going to use for tree trunks, you can use either, I'm going to give you two options. You can use either blue, straight primary blue, or you could use blue with a tiny, tiny little smidge of red. So you can use like a purplish blue or straight blue. Totally up to you. When I was making the sample, I used straight blue, but I know my blue and I like my blue. If your blue is a not desirable color, you could make it a little bit more purple. Or if you have a perfect purple that will work for here, you could use that as well. Just make sure it's not uh, as purple as this. You want this dimmer. You want this bluer than this. This needs to be brighter purple than this. Yeah, are you guys with me? Okay, guys, so I'm going to grab that blue. And I'll actually... I'm not going to use the primary blue. I want them a bit lighter. So I will take primary blue, this one, the super dark one that looks almost like black. I'll scoop it here 
and I'll just a tiny touch of white to make it a touch lighter, not much lighter, a tiny touch lighter. Let's see. Let's try a little spot. Oh, yes, beautiful. It's exactly what I want. So do you see the difference? Primary blue, blue with a touch of white. Not a huge difference, but there is difference. And if you wanted a touch purple, you could just grab a touch of red and add it in too. But again, not necessary unless you really want it. And now with the top edge of my brush, because as I said, I'm using flat brush, I'm going to start adding my tree trunks. I will start with the one that's right in the middle. You can make them any shape you want. As long as they are not straight, you're good. You don't want to have straight tree trunks for this particular painting. They should be very snaky looking. So I will start by adding right here. the tree trunk and then if you wanted to you could make it a little bit thicker closer to the bottom but that's not necessary either it's not something you have to have to do it would be nice to have kind of stuff Okay, now that I have my medium tree, uh, my middle tree trunk, I'm going to add second one. It's going to be very close to the first one, very close. And again, I will start from the bottom, all my tree trunks, I am starting from the very bottom. And this one, I'm going to give it slightly different shape. You don't want all your tree trunks to have the same shape. That's plain boring. Okay, I have two tree trunks. It's a good start. It's getting very tree trunky in here. And now I'm going to add my third tree trunk and I'll put it somewhere right here. Now guys, if you position your tree trunks different, that's okay. It's not an issue for this painting. So my third one is going to go like this, I would say. And even though this one is straighter than the other two, it's still not straight, straight. So that's my tree trunky start. Now, once I have my tree trunks, I'm going to wash off my medium brush and I'll put it aside. And I will grab my small brush and with a small brush and the same color paint, I'm going to add um, branches. Now you can add as many branches as you want. There is no particular amount of branches that you have to have and they need to be not straight either. So a big no-no is a small straight branches. You don't want to have small straight branches. You want to have a long and flowy and curved branches. That's what you want. And another thing to keep in mind while you do your branches is all branches are going to start from the tree and go out. You don't want to start your branches from the outside and bring them in. And the reason why is wherever you start your branch is going to be the thickest point. And you want your thickest point to be closest to the tree because your branch is growing from the tree. So it's going to be naturally thicker where it connects to the tree. So I'm going to take the same paint. I'm actually going to water it down just a touch. I find that it works better for smaller um, lines to have paint that's a little bit more liquid versus very thick paint but you guys don't have to do it if you feel like your paint is liquid enough as is but if you feel like your paint is pretty thick then yes just water down a little bit not too much so it doesn't drip but enough for you to put nice flowy lines and I will start by putting a branch right here so on the bottom ish of my right tree starting from the tree trunk I'm gonna add a branch and I might need to do a couple brush strokes to get it right you don't have to do it on one brush stroke especially for longer branches your brush will probably not hold enough paint 
to do a long branch right away with just one brush stroke. If it does, good, good for you. But you see nice and long and flowy and thicker to the bottom, thicker to where it connects to the tree. And now I'm gonna start adding more branches. You can follow me either literally branch by branch and do exactly like I do, or you can position them wherever you want them to be. Now I'll position the second one right here. That's my second branch. And so on. I will add one right here. And I will add a couple of branches on top of this one. And then I'll give you all some time to finish your branches. There is absolutely no rush. And again, you guys can have a bit more branches or less branches if you would like. You don't have to have the exact same amount of branches. If you have more, that's good. If you have less, that's good too. So I'll move this a bit further. And as always, when you guys have it, give me thumbs up. That way I have an idea of how many of us are ready, how many of us are not. That way I know how many minutes you need more before we move to next step. Yay, I see thumbs ups. That's awesome. I'm so glad. Okay, I have so many thumbs ups, but still not enough. Knowing the amount of you guys that are watching, this is a very small fraction. So I'll give you a couple more minutes. And then we will move. You're not, are you going branch crazy? Yes, guys, it's good to know when to stop. Don't overdo this. Now, guys, while you're doing this, I was reading comments on event page um, for this event. And I see a lot of comments of people who are upset. 
Guys, we cannot respond to you. If you keep messaging us on event page at the start time, um, we can, unfortunately, we cannot respond to you. We list everywhere, absolutely everywhere. We um, write down hundreds of times on how to join this event, hoping that you go, guys will come across it. And we do post link whenever we get a second to do this. But unfortunately, these events are free, so we don't have someone who will just sit there and answer to all your messages. So please don't get upset. We give you very direct instructions on how to join it, and we love seeing you here. But we don't have physical time and ability to be responding and doing life, event, life events at the same time. So I am glad all of you were able to join us and finally found us. Very happy to have you here. Yay, Martha, thank you. And Martha, this video is going to be up for a week minimum. So nothing to worry about. You can do this tomorrow or this weekend. All right, guys. I see a lot of thumbs up. So I know that we are ready to move. If you're not there yet, that's okay. Take your time. No rush. I don't want to rush you through this. Take as much time as you need. If you want me to give you a couple of minutes now, no problem. Or if you would like to rewind, that's okay too. Whichever works better. Now for our next color, what we will do to the same color you just used, you're gonna add a little bit of black. I know it's that time of the day. So just grab medium brush. We're going back to our medium brush. So wash off your small brush right away so the paint doesn't dry on it. And go back to this color. If you have a little bit more left, good. Use it as a base and just add a touch more black and uh, mix it in. If you don't have any more left, mix it again. Just grab a little bit of primary blue, add a touch of white and a touch of black this time. You don't want to turn it into straight dark black. You want it to be dark, but not straight black. If it looks grayish for this particular step, it's okay. It's supposed to look that way. It's going to turn into this weird color, actually. But guys, bear with me. Once we add it, it's going to look good. So, I have it on my brush. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add more tree trunks. I will add two more on this side and two more on this side. And again, you can have any other side amount of tree trunks. It doesn't have to be this particular amount. So, let's see if that's the right color. Yes. Do you see it almost looks black on the screen right now? But once I bring it closer, it's not black at all. Or once we start adding other actually black, black elements, you will see the difference. So right now, we're doing this one. You see, it's it looks black if you don't have this one for comparison. Once you put this one for comparison, you see that this one is actually black and this one is not black it's more like grayish this is the close-up hi Anna okay so let's add our trees tree trunkers so we'll add this one and again any shade that you want it to be in my case is going to be straighter than the others but not straight don't want any of them to be super straight. All of them need to have some sort of shape to it. And I'm going to go over it and I'm going to just make it a little bit thicker on the bottom. And now we're going to go on to this one and we'll add one more closer to the side. And again, any shape that you want it to be doesn't have to be the particular shape that I'm doing. So I have two tree trunks there and now I'm going to add two right here. Keep in mind, our biggest tree trunk is going to go about right here, so right here. 
this is where our biggest tree trunk is going to be. So you don't want to take that spot with other tree trunk. Put the other tree trunk a little bit to the left. So leave a little bit of space here for the main tree trunk. So I'm going to start my tree trunk right here. I will add one here. And this one is going to be pretty straight too, not the straightest, but pretty straight. And I will add the last one right here. Okay, we have all our tree trunks. How exciting is this? So now, what I'm going to do right away actually i'm going to take a bit more of this color i just used and i will add a little bit of this on this two trees so on the two side blue trees just a little bit you don't want to cover up the whole tree trunk with it you just want to add a little bit of this color And on this one as well. So they're kind of blue and kind of not. And a little bit on a darker side. And after this, we're going to retire our medium brush. We're going to leave it for a little bit, put it away. So wash off your medium brushes as soon as you have it and put them aside and then we're gonna move to small brushes. But I will give you guys a second to do this. I know it's a lot of work. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna check and see if anyone has any questions that need to be answered to. Yes, awesome. This is a good mother-daughter activity or grandmother-daughter activity, grandmother-granddaughter activity or sister-sister activity or sister-brother activity. Anyway, good family activity, absolutely. So if you miss the color of the last tree, so this darker color, how we mixed it, it's a primary blue, touch of white, touch of black. So the same as this color, but with addition of a little bit of black. So if you have a little bit more of this left, just add a touch of black to it and you will get the right color. If you don't have any more of this left, then just take a little bit of blue and add white to it, not too much. You don't wanna make it very light. Just wanna make it a little lighter than primary blue and then add a touch of black as well. And you don't wanna make it super black, you just wanna make it darker. And if it gets dimmer for this particular step, it's fine. Um, to answer your question about recordings, yes, the video will be available. It's going to stay on our page. So if you can't make it today, that's no problem. Amy, the video is supposed to show up magically on your feed. Sometimes it does take it a while, especially if you logged in before the start, or sometimes it just glitches. So even I, if Lisa is teaching and I go to check it out, sometimes I don't see it when I just go on a page. I have to refresh my page a couple times, and then it just shows up. 
you don't have to go into video stop you just have to refresh the page and i know it can be a little bit frustrating but it is what it is we are so not in control of it okay guys let me know when you have it and i'll show you branches but again no rush ready to go yes good 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 i am so excited to see this i'm so excited to see how it turns out i think it's going to be great if you have to start over that's no problem too just rewind to the first to the beginning Mm -hmm. no worries yes if you have um paint that dries longer my paint is a crazy fast drying paint as soon as you put it on it's almost dry right away if you have a paint that's a bit thicker and it dries longer no problem you can do half now and do half either in an hour or tomorrow whatever works for your schedule that's a good thing about videos being saved and staying there that you can go back to it at any time Yes, mom and daughter night, perfect. Okay, I see lots of thumbs ups. That is great. And now we're gonna switch to our branches. So you're gonna grab a small brush and with the same exact color, we will start adding our small branches. So we'll start with our uh, main, so with our new trees, with our darker trees because they don't have any branches yet. And again, you can either follow me on this or you can do your own thing and add branches wherever you want them to be. But the same way, very important that all our branches start from the tree trunk and go out, not the other way around. Okay, those two trees got branches. Now let's add some more branches to those trees. On that particular painting, this one doesn't have any branches, but if you wanted to, you could add them. It's not gonna be a mistake. It's gonna be a branchy tree. And this one has a couple. Okay, and once I have those branches, what I'm going to do, I will add a little bit of this color to the branches on these two trees. Do you remember how we added a little bit of darker color on the tree trunks here and here? I will add a bit of a darker color on the branches as well. Again, you don't want to cover up all your branches with this color. You just want to add a tiny little flick of this color to branches. Okay, I have lots of beautiful branches. I am very happy with them. So I'm gonna stop, no more branches for me. I am branched out for the day. 
Kathy, that's hilarious. I am glad you love it. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll give you a couple more minutes. As always, whenever you have it, give me thumbs up. That way I know that you are good and you are ready to move to next step. Yes, it does dry darker. Not every paint, but most acrylic paints do dry a little bit darker. My paint dries much darker. How long did it take me to make this? Well, actually, the artist that created this painting is our very, very talented Liesl, who you probably know, because she does a lot of uh, Facebook Live events here. And she's super, super awesome. So I don't know how long they originally take, took her to paint it. When I was making my sample, it took me probably, I would say, about 40 minutes. But I wasn't teaching, right? I was just doing it by myself. When you teach it, it's longer. We're probably going to go over two hours for this painting. I'm not sure yet. I can't tell you exactly, but probably over two hours. And her version is actually better of this because she put a lot, a lot of work into it. Yes, father and daughter. Awesome. Hope you guys are having fun. I know, running out of paint, it happens. It happens to all of us, so don't worry about it. It's not because you're new. It just does happen. All right, I see a lot of people are ready, so that is great. Yes, that's right. Time flies when you're having fun. An overgrown garden will look amazing. So guys, let me show you next step. We're gonna use more of the same paint. So for next step, you're gonna use either, um, if you have a little bit of this paint, you could, or you could technically use primary blue if you wanted to. But ideally, you want to have the same color, ideally. So if you don't mind making it again, or if you still have some good, just use that one. If you don't want to, <laughs> it's been hour 15 minutes, and you feel like, nah, at this point, I'm just going to go with primary blue. That's totally fine, too. Either one of them will work just fine. So grab a little bit of that color. And so... Guys, don't do this yet. I want to show you first something. I want to show you how to do it, and then I'll give you some time to do it. Because you need to decide whether you're going to do this with a medium brush or with a small brush. So what are we going to do? We're going to start adding grass. And you're going to flick your brush from the bottom up. And you don't want it straight. You want it to have some sort of curve to it. Um, let me show you a couple pieces here. So the goal is to get those nice pointy top edges, top ends. If you could get them with your medium brush, then use medium brush, totally fine. If you cannot get them with a medium brush, then you need to switch to small brush. Sometimes what I would do is I would start by using my medium brush. And then once I do the base with a medium brush, I will take my small brush and I will fill it up and I will add those beautiful pointy ends with a small brush. That's an option for you too. So we're gonna start feeling this grass 
doing brush strokes from the bottom up. And you see my color right now is not exactly the same, but keep in mind, this one is dry, that's why it's darker. And as we go to the sides, our grass is going to come up a little bit higher. You guys so I have my first layer do you remember I told you I'm gonna do the mixed combo that's what I'm gonna do I have my first layer I'm gonna wash my brush now and I will switch to small brush and now using small brush I'm gonna add a few more pieces of grass that will have a nice pointy end do you see how beautiful those are that are done with a small brush the only why I would probably not recommend doing the whole thing with a small brush, unless that's your thing and you want them all to be perfect, is because small brush takes forever. If you do this whole thing with a small brush, you're gonna have a really hard time keeping up with us when generally doing this all in one shot because you're gonna be exhausted after doing it. However, if you're a perfectionist, no problem. I'm not gonna tell you not to do it. If you would like to do it, go for it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue adding few flakes with my small brush now to add those beautiful pointy tops. And you see how I'm leaving these corners very bare and empty. That's okay because we're gonna flick some black from there. So you're gonna cover all this with the black. The area that you want to be worrying about is mostly middle. The middle, you're not going to add too much black, but the sides you'll add quite a bit of black. So don't worry about your sides. If they're a little bit empty there, that's okay. Ta-da! I am loving this grass. The biggest trick with grass is to just keep flicking it from the bottom up. Don't do this the other way around. Don't flick it from the bottom or from the top down because then you're not going to have this nice pointy, flicky top. So that's very important when you do your grass, guys. And I'm seeing comments about uh, brush sizes or brush strokes. If you cannot hear what I'm saying, check the uh, sound on your device. I am explaining this, but if you feel like this video has no sound, just double check the sound on your device. And actually, I just realized that you wouldn't hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to respond to you, person, in um, letters. Oopsie, oopsie.
All right. How is everyone doing? Yes, I see thumbs ups. That's great. Erin, no worries. The video recording will be on our page. As soon as this video is done, the recording will be saved and it's definitely going to be up for at least one week. I wouldn't put it out for too long because we do de delete them eventually. So you don't want to run out into a situation where um, you really wanted to paint it for like a month and then you finally uh, brought a canvas and you went on Facebook and it's deleted. So don't put it out for like a month, but week it's guaranteed going to be there most likely more than a week yes kathy i am so glad to hear you're doing amazing that is a music to my ears awesome Awesome job, guys. So let's move to next step then. Next step is very simple. It's much simpler than this. This was hard. Next step is not that hard. And what are we going to do? We're going to add a little bit of fluff on top. But the hard part about it, you're going to need to mix your teal again. So you're going to need to mix this color or even darker. So that's a tough part. But because you already made teal twice for this and for that, you are pros at this point. So I don't think that's going to be as hard for you guys. So what are you going to do? You're going to grab the biggest brush that you have. I am going back to my um, large square brush. And I will start by mixing teal that is similar to this. So either close to the lightest one or a little bit darker or, um, yeah, something like this. Somewhere in here. If you still have a little bit left from when we used it earlier, good. You could just use that. You don't even have to mix it again. If you don't, then mix a little bit of it. And with that color, we're going to start dabbing the top. So let me show you, and then I'll give you guys some, to, some time to do this. Um, no rush at all. So I'm going to grab this paint, and I'm going to start dabbing right here. Now, you're not going to see it because of how light it is, and that's okay. But... You will see it a little bit. So if it's not in your face bright, that's okay. So you're going to dab up using your brush very flat, the very top here. And you will see the tops of your tree is going to start disappearing. Now I'm going to show you the whole piece right away, and then I'll give you some time to do this. As soon as you have that, you're going to make darker color. So just a little bit darker. And if you have darker too good, you just grab it. You might still have some on your plate. If you don't, to the same color you just used, you're going to add a touch of blue and a touch of yellow and mix them up. That's going to darken it up for you. And with this color, we're going to go and add another layer of dab. So do you see, I added on a side first and it matched the background ish. It doesn't have to be perfect match. And now I'm going to start bringing it closer to the middle. And that's where you start actually seeing your dabs. I'm going to do that, but always start here because you, uh, wherever you start is going to be the blobbiest area. And then as you spread your paint and dab into your light colors, you want your dabs to be a bit more transparent. And the way for you to get that is to start on the side. And then whenever you start running out of paint, start bringing it into the middle on your light area. Now, whenever you have this, you're going to go to even darker one. So again, same thing, just add a touch of blue, touch of yellow, and it will get darker. And with this even darker tealy green color, we're going to dab next layer. Do you see? Now this one is visibly darker. And again, you start with a corner. While well, your brush still has lots of paint, you dab off the corner because you want that to be the blobby's part. And then you start dabbing a bit further into the other lighter colors. Okay. 
and go lower as well. And you see those brush strokes, those dabs are nice and transparent. And that's exactly what you want. You want that transparency. And I will do the exact same thing on the other side as well. And guys, if you are doing your sides, the edges of your canvas, don't forget to dab on them as well. Now this one, you don't have to worry as much because we're going to position our purple tree there. So a lot of this is going to be colored by a purple tree. Okay guys, and the final color we're going to do there, you could go either darker, even darkest, darkest um, teal, so without any white, so just blue with a tiny touch of yellow mixed up, or you could even do black. If you wanted a bit more contrast, you could go with black. So right here, you're going to dub your darkest final color, just a touch. I think I'm going to go with black at this point, but it has to be very lightly. You don't want to have blobs. So only take a touch of paint on your brush. Or what I would do sometimes is I would take paint on my brush first, and then I will dab it with paint on it on a cloth or a paper towel. That way I get rid of that extra paint that I don't want. So some sort of dark color. Again, could be black, could be just darkest blue with a touch of yellow. And very, very lightly dab top and the corners, very lightly. And now I'm gonna give you all some time to do this. And as always, whenever you guys have it, Give me a thumbs up. Yes, absolutely. If you have a blow dryer and you would like to uh, blow dry it because you want it to dry faster, that, that is a very helpful tool to have. The top part of my canvas is pretty wet too, but it's okay. For this particular step, I don't find it bad that um, it blobs on. But if that's bothering you, you could either blow dry it or you can just give it a bit more time and um, do it once it dries. Yes, couple different shades. So lighter, medium, darker, and then I had a darker switch was black. Or you could go darker shade. It doesn't have to be this particular amount of shades as long as you go from lighter to darker to darker to darker it's all good you can do this in two shades you can do this in ten shades 
No, you're not adding leafy areas on the top of the lower branches. So leaves are not going to go on the branches. However, if you feel like your painting would benefit from having leaves on top of the branches, go for it. Doesn't mean you can't add that. If you want to, absolutely. I am not going to be adding them though. How far down do you go with dab dab? As far as you want. I went right here. This is, I would say, about an inch, maybe a bit more. Uh, on a side, so like that side, this is at least three, four inches. But again, my canvas is pretty big too. It's 16 by 20 inch canvas. Why are there no leaves on branches? I have no idea. This is just a painting. This is not a real life. This is a magical, non-existent forest that only exists in our imagination and on a canvas. So it can be however it wants to be. If you would like to add branches on leaves on your branches, absolutely. I'm not going to tell you not to. Go for it. Okay. I see a couple of you are good to go. That's good. I'll wait for a couple more minutes for the rest of us. And I'll move it out a bit further so you guys can see better. Okay, guys. Oh no, arm in a wet grass, that's not good. So, Don, just add a bit more white into your paint. But once we get darker colors, it's going to be a bit more contrast as well. Okay, guys, I see a lot of us um, already. I see a lot of thumbs up, so I'm going to show you next steps. And if you feel like you're not there yet, take your time. Now we're going to move onto our grass. Let's add some grass here. And we're going to do grass in black. So you're going to grab your medium brush for starters, some black paint, and using the top edge of your medium brush, we're going to add some grass. Now we're going to start from the sides. So I'm going to start from my sides, and I will again flick from the bottom. You don't want to cover all your blue grass. You still want to see some of it, but you do want to have a pretty solid coverage closer to the bottom. And then as you go closer to the middle, your grass should get lower and lower and lower. And right in the middle is just a few little burst strokes like this. And then exact same thing on the other side. I'll show you guys closer. Okay, I added all this black grass, but do you remember how I did two different brushes for my blue grass? I'm gonna do the same with the black grass. 
As soon as I have my medium brush and my first layer, I'm going to wash my medium brush off, dry it and put it inside, and I'm going to switch to my small brush. And I'll take some black paint and I'll add those pretty flakes with my small brush. So the same way that we did with blue grass, we're going to do with the black grass. All those pretty flicks. Okay, my grass is gorgeous, so I'm going to let it be. Enough of grass for me. Is that straight black for the grass? Absolutely, straight black. And you see very little of it in the middle. You want to see a lot of blue grass in the middle, but then you want to have a lot of black grass closer to the end. So you want your black grass to be small, 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 and then bigger, 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 bigger. However, even on the ends, you still want to see some of your bluegrass. You don't want to cover all your bluegrass. Okay, guys, so I will give you a second to do this. And once you're done, if you would like to go get yourself a quick drink or have a washroom break, go for it. I'm going to get myself a drink as well. Just because I'm talking so much, it's good to have something for my throat. So I can continue talking so much for the rest of the event. So I'm going to take a little tiny uh, drink getting break. And if you need to get yourself a cup of tea or go to the washroom quickly, go for it. You have a couple minutes. Okay, guys, I hope you, I am back and I hope you got a chance to 
do whatever you need to do. Get yourself a little drinky, or go to the washroom, or change your water, whatever you need to do. Spooky forest is not bad. It's going to get very um, magical once we start adding fireflies. Until then, it's just a forest. Yes, or change your water. Exactly. Melissa, I would say we are two thirds through. So probably at least another half an hour. And yes, the recording will be posted. So absolutely, you can catch up whenever. Yep, you could do that. Yeah, good suggestions here in comments, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's continue. Now we're going to move on to our treetop right here. So that beautiful purple treetop. Now you guys can decide what kind of shade of purple you're going to have here. And depending on brand of paint that you use and generally on paint that you use, it may be brighter, it may be dimmer, it may be bluer, it may be redder. Whatever color you would like, absolutely go for it. Use that one. I am going to be mixing just a medium to dark blue. Uh, sorry, purple. So I'm going to grab my medium brush. You can do this with either medium brush or a large brush, whichever works for you. I would say if you have a choice of square brush, or pointy brush or flat brush with the rounded edges. Best for this one is a flat with the rounded edges. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This is a flat with the rounded edges. Do you see? It's a flat brush, but it does have those rounded edges. That is the best for this step. However, if you don't have this one, nothing to worry about. You can do this with any other brush. So we're gonna mix. We'll start by mixing our dark purple. How are you gonna do this? You're gonna grab blue, red, and white. If your red has pre-mixed yellow into it, if it looks more like an orange rather than red, rather than pink or magenta, then it may not give you the best um, purple because if your color has yellow in it, it's gonna tint it and make it more like a brown color versus purple. So if you have choice between pink and red and your red is orangey use pink as a mixer instead of red now if your red is more like a magenta red then good just use that my primary red is actually called primary red and it's more like a magenta color it has a pinker undertone so it's absolutely perfect for mixing purple but again if you have red and pink choices and your red is orangey go with pink Okay, so let's start mixing our purple. I am going to start with red. So I'm going to grab my red, I'll add some blue, and I will add a little bit of white. Not a lot, but a little bit, just a tiny touch. And mix quite a bit of this paint because you will need a lot of it. And as we go, we're going to make it lighter and lighter, so you're not going to need to mix the color again. You just mix it once, as long as you mix enough of it. my red, I have my blue. Never add equal amounts of red and blue if you're trying to make purple because blue is a much, much bossier color than red. It's going to overtake. However, if you would like your purple to be on a bluer side, then you could add equal amounts of red and blue. So mix my purple. It was fast and easy. But I do need to add some white to it. I'm going to grab another bottle of white. I'm running out here. Running out of white, guys. Running out of white. And if you go to our store anytime soon, one little tip for you, you're always going to need more white than any other paint. 
white goes fastest out of all the paints. So grab extra white every time you go to art store or to dollar store or any craft store to get some paint. White is a very important paint to have. So I have my purple, added just a touch of it, a white to it, so it doesn't look black because my purple, when it has no white mixed into it, it looks almost black. Can you use metallic purple? Absolutely, that would look gorgeous. Any metallic color for the top of the tree will look gorgeous. So now, I'm gonna start dabbing. I'm gonna dab a line, starting somewhere right here. So I would say about one third from the top, ish. It doesn't have to be exactly that, but similar to that. I'm gonna dab a line using my brush really, really flat. And how far do I dab it? I would say until this middle tree. Ideally, your line should be a bit straighter than mine. Mine doesn't look very straight, but that's okay. I can fix that. It's not a problem. Okay, and now I'm gonna very lightly dab up the top. Now, do you see how thick this line is? The top, you don't want it that thick because we didn't go there with much lighter colors. But for us, just to know where it goes, it's still very helpful to dab it up a little bit. So very, very lightly just dab up the shape of your tree, just for you to know. You're gonna cover up with other colors later, but this will help your brain to not get confused as we go forward. And you see, it's like as if you were painting a circle and then you cut off the bottom. That's what it looks like. That's funny, Amy. That's hilarious. Yes, Rachel, that happens to me too. I will have the bottles of other paint forever and white go so fast. So it's always good to have whenever you go to buy some, get extra white every time. So line and outline. And you guys, if you wanted to make it a bit bigger, you could, or if you wanted to make it a bit smaller, that's totally fine too. We are not stuck with the size and shape. That's just a suggestion as everything else pretty much. And once we have this, we're gonna dub up a bit more, but now we're gonna start going more in like half circular motion here. So I'm gonna start dabbing more my middle with the same dark color. And you do wanna dab it pretty solid. You don't wanna see much through it. Get closer to you guys. You don't need to see full picture right now, just the top. Now it's a lot of dabbing. You might find it either very calming to just dab, 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 or very frustrating. I am usually not a fan of that much dubbing, but it needs to be done to look pretty. So we're gonna do it. Now, once you have that first layer, do you see I have quite a bit of it? So once you have that first layer of dark dabs, we're gonna move to our lighter purple. So what you will do, I would say don't um, use up all of your dark purple just in case, in case you overdo it with other colors and you would like to add some more in the end, just in case. 
it's good to save a little bit for later if you don't want to mix it again. So I would say take half of the dark purple that you have left, or maybe a little bit more, just not all of it, and add a little bit of white to make lighter purple. And with this lighter purple, we're gonna go and start dabbing right here. So you're gonna start dabbing where your first purple ends. You see, I'm dabbing mostly around it right now. And only once you have a round dab, now you're gonna start bringing it in. But now you do wanna dab transparent because you still wanna see that layer underneath. And guys, do you see I went with like a very ready pinky purple. If you want to go a bit bluer with your purple, you don't have to have this almost red kind of purple. You can have much bluer purple if you want. I just wanted to have a bit more contrast. So I made my purple a bit on the redder side. But totally your choice on a shade of purple. You can have it bluer, you can have it redder. And now do you see how beautiful is that blending? Because I am just very lightly with whatever I have left on the brush going into this purple. I am not refreshing my brush and with a fresh paint going in here. Fresh paint, I'm going only out and then I'm mixing it towards the middle with just those little dots. And after you have the second color, we're gonna move to even lighter color. So you're gonna grab some more white and add it to the color you just used. So don't mix a new one. Just to use the same color as a base, just add a bit more white to it. And with this color, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna go outline first. And then blend it in. And with this lighter ones, I will add a few more um, bigger brush strokes around my tree. Because right now, this is too even. This is very even blending, right? So I'm going to mess it up a little bit and take some more paint and just add it all through. But not blend it, intentionally not blend it. Just add it like a highlight to give it some texture.
Okay, guys. So my tree top is almost done. Now, if you do your sides, don't forget to bring all these pretty colors onto the edge of your canvas. By the way, it's going to look really great. It's going to look like you wrap the image around the canvas, which is a very nice look here. And we're going to do another little thing with the same color. So as soon as you have your top, and I don't assume that you have it yet, I will give you guys more time, no problem at all. But whenever you do have it, what you will do, you're going to wash off your medium brush, you will take some of that purple, whichever shade you would like. I would probably go with a medium purple here. And we're going to add a little bit of a grass in this color. So we will add a few brush strokes on our grass on the sides only. So I'll add a little right here. Just a few brush strokes. And a little bit on the other side as well. Just a, just a touch. And you can decide whether you want to go light purple or dark purple or medium purple, but medium purple is probably the safest bet here. Okay, and I'll give you guys a few minutes to do this. And whenever you have it, give me thumbs up. Yes, perfect. I see some thumbs up. That's great. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Done, yes, good, good, good. I know this is when it starts coming together. So that's more than halfway through point. So that's when it starts coming together and actually look good. Every painting that ha has that point past which it starts looking good. Yes, we are putting a tree trunk under the tree top. That's right. Okay, I see a couple of thumbs up. That's great, guys.
purple grass. Um, I added it on the sides right here, just a touch on each side, just a little bit, not too much. Spot the difference. That's right, tree trunks and tree trunk and fireflies. That's the difference. Yes, I did put my purple grass on both sides, but just a touch, guys. It's just a little highlight. Okay, now we're going to move on to our black tree trunk underneath our purple um, tree top. And you're going to use two different brushes. You're going to use your medium brush and your small brush. So get them both ready and you will use black paint. So make sure you have enough black paint on your palette. And we will start by taking our medium brush and our black paint, and we're gonna put a tree trunk. So not from the very top, I would say starting from somewhere here, and preferably in the middle-ish of the tree. And you can make it fairly straight if you want to. Do you remember I told you it's gonna go right here? Yeah, that spot in between your other tree trunks. And don't make it too crazy straight. You don't want it like a stick straight. It doesn't need to have any particular shape. And I'm gonna lightly blend it down. Do you see, I don't wanna cover up my grass, but I do wanna blend it out a little bit. And after this, I am washing off my medium brush right away. I am not going to be doing the rest with the medium brush. I will connect it with a small brush. So now I'm going to switch to my small brush and I'm going to go with my small brush. And I'm going to start connecting my tree trunk to the top. So I will make it into a couple of different branches here. So all my branches, again, I'm starting from the tree trunk and I'm going up one, I will add second one right here. So that's two. You guys can have as many as you want. It doesn't have to be this particular amount or you can follow me precisely, totally up to you. So that's two. I'm gonna add one more here. And you see I'm going on my purple that's three and I'll add a couple more as well I'll add another big branching out right here And I know it's hard to see them because they're so dark, but once we highlight them, that's where you're really gonna see all of your branches. And we'll add one more right here. And I'm gonna add a little small branch coming out from here as well. Now I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do this and whenever you have it, 
Let me know in chat. Becky, no worries. The video will be up for a couple days, at least a week. So if you would like to paint it tomorrow or maybe this weekend, it definitely is going to be up on our page. Whoa. All right, guys. Now we're gonna grab, we're gonna wash our brush, and we will take a little bit of white, and we're gonna start highlighting our branches. Yes, they are still wet, and yes, your white is gonna be blending in, but that's not a bad thing. That is actually a good thing. So I will be highlighting pretty much everything, but only on the right side. And try to make your highlight as fine as you can. So guys, do you see I'm adding white, very fine lines, but do you see I'm not adding it on the outside of black, I'm adding it on the inside of black. Do you see? Not on the edge, but a little bit on the inside of black. And you will be doing this with every branch. If you don't want to do every branch, that's fine. You don't have to. You can choose a couple and do it with a couple of branches. But I will be doing this with every branch. Because I want to see my branches. And otherwise, there's not a chance I'm going to see my branches. Here are my highlights. So I have a small highlight everywhere, and I'm gonna add a bigger one just in a few spots because I want a few spots to be more visible and darker, but not everywhere. I'm not a big fan of a very thick highlight all over the place. I added a bit of a darker or brighter highlight in just a few spots. I'll bring it closer to you guys. And after this, we're going to move to the most fun part. We're going to move to our fireflies. And how we will do them? We're going to do them in a few different layers. We're going to start with um, a smudgy layer, and then we'll do the linear layer. What are you going to need? You're going to need white mixed with yellow and small brush. So grab a small, small brush, grab some yellow, grab some white, mix them up. And with that one, we're going to put first layer of our fireflies. I'm going to start with this little path here, and I'll do a little path here, and then just a few here and there, but you don't have to worry about that now. So I'm going to start right here. 
and I'll start with the bigger one. So I'll put a few circles and then I'll take my finger and I'll smudge them up. Do you see? I'm creating the smudges. So that's one smudge. I'll put another smudge right here. You can make some bigger, some smaller. So that's a couple smudges. Let's add more smudges here. That's just the first layer. And now I'm going to add a few of those right here as well. And I'll make like a little pathway from the bottom up. Okay, now I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to do this. And then we will do the linear layer. Now, we don't have to put all of the fireflies with this first layer only few but the linear layer we're going to do more of them so i'll give you guys a minute to do this and as always when you have it give me thumbs up Yes, technically you could do highlights on the other side of branches. It doesn't have to be this side. Usually we try to position highlights for closer to the middle just because visually it looks better, but it wouldn't be a mistake if you do it on the other side. Yes, we definitely have fireflies. Awesome, I see some thumbs up. That's great, guys. Awesome. So now, let's take more of that color. I'm actually going to make my color a little bit lighter. I will add a bit more white to my yellow. And with this color, we're going to add the circular part. So I'm going to start circling around with my small brush, doing these things. 
I'll add some of them on the existing ones and some of them by themselves. I'm actually going to switch to different small brush because that brush has very long bristles and it's very hard to do circles when your brush has very long bristles. So I switched to different small brush. And I'm going to add some other ones that don't have that underlay of smudgy. And the same here. Yeah, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do this. And after that, we're going to add some dots. And now I'm going to switch my color. So I will wash off my small brush and I will grab some white, straight white. And with that white, I'm going to start adding dots. So, and if you, if your brush has a nice rounded end, you could just dip the end of your brush instead of dipping the front and you can just dot with the end. That way your, your dots are going to be more consistent. But for that, you need to have a nice rounded end to your brush. If your brush has end that looks like somebody cut it off, chopped it off, don't use it. It's not going to give you a pretty circular dots. So depending on what brush you use, you're going to use either the back end or the front end of a brush. You're going to grab some white and you're going to dot and you're going to dot above the grass first. So everywhere above the grass. Do you see? I dotted this uh, with that back end of a brush. And do you see? This all, this difference in sizes came out from just one time refilled brush. This was the first brush dub, then the rest smaller and smaller and smaller. You see this variety, beautiful. And it will give you consistent circles. If you dub with a back end. If you dub with a front end, not a problem too, but I really like this look. So I'm going to continue dotting the top of my brass
And that's where it starts looking really magical. And then I will dab in those little lines as well. Look at this, guys. It is looking better and better and better. If you wanted to add lighter middles to those uh, bigger ones, you could do that as well. You could just take a little bit of white and add it to the middles. But you guys don't have to. It looks great without them as well. And there's actually one more little thing we need to do. And that is not sign it, even though that will be coming later. The last thing we're going to do on the actual painting as an actual step is we're going to take just a tiny, tiny little smidge of white on your medium brush. And after you take that white, actually dab it on a cloth or a paper towel or a napkin after you take the white so you get rid of almost all your paint so you only have a tiny little smidge left and you're going to go around your tree and add just a little white highlight but it has to be a tiny touch otherwise it doesn't work so don't overdo it if you feel like nah i don't want to risk it i like it when they ruin it, then don't do this. Yes, I am loving how this tiny little white highlight looks. Makes it pop even more. I'll show you guys in a second close up so you can see it closer. Here you go. You can see the transparency here. You see very lightly, almost no white. All right, guys. And once you have that, officially you are done. The only thing that's left for you is to find a perfect spot and sign it with your name wherever you want it to be you can do your signature you can do your initials you can do your full name full name last name middle name whatever makes you happy and guys if you didn't get a chance to finish today you can always do it tomorrow the video is going to stay up for at least one week and if you would like to paint it again and maybe do try experiment with colors and go with paints and fuchsias for your background 
and switch it around and do a teal tree. Go for it. I think that will look amazing as well. So feel free to experiment. Um, yeah, don't be afraid of experiments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will be checking comments uh, for the next couple of minutes to see if you guys have any questions before I disconnect from you. If you would like to support us and if you would like us to make more videos like this for you, you can support us by using stars or if you guys want to say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. And you can do that through either e-transfer or you can do that through PayPal. And there is um, an email and a PayPal link in the description of this video and you can use that absolutely. Tips are always appreciated, but never an obligation. Let's see if you guys have any questions for us. Yeah, flowers instead of fireflies will look really good to you. You guys are very welcome. Thank you for all your nice comments. It's always so nice to read that you guys have fun and you enjoyed it. It just makes us very, very happy. And if you would like to show us how it turned out, as always, feel free to take a photo and post the two comments to this video. That way, not only us, but everyone else can also see how it turned out because I'm sure everyone is wondering how it looks and I'm sure we are not the only ones who want to see everyone's results. So guys, feel free to do that. I don't know where Chad disappeared for me because I want to see if you guys have more questions. But something happened and Chad disappeared for me. That's okay. Okay, then if I cannot see chat anymore, I am going to end this. I will be checking comments. So if you still have questions, I will be checking comments as soon as this video is done and I can see and I can try to respond to most of them or all of them. I'll see what I can do. But thank you. Thank you again all for joining us. It was fun. I had a lot of fun painting and I hope you had a lot of fun painting. And I hope to see you at more of our events. Bye, everyone.